Well guys, here we are. I have downgraded my Sony Xperia XZ Premium back to Android 8 Oreo. As you can see from over here. So let's go back to home. And the best part is I've got the old volume control back which I loved. And the drop down notification bar is also from Android 8 Oreo. And now I will be able to install nightlight filter on this phone without any problem. And YouTube 4K works just fine. I did not test Prime Video just now, but yeah. And most of all, the battery life is back to normal. So this phone is performing normally, does not heat up or anything. Everything is nice and smooth. Now I ended up flashing the French firmware from XDA developers. Uh, this exact one, again, I'll put the links in the video description. Now, one functionality that I lost was BOLTE. So voice over LTE functionality has disappeared from mobile network options. But to me, that, that does not matter because Airtel does not support the XZ Premium on their VOLTE network. So it does not really matter if we lose that functionality. But yeah, 4G works just fine, internet is working fine, and most importantly, the battery backup is fine and the phone is nice and smooth. But yeah, before we begin, one thing I want to tell you guys that I don't have a gun pointed on your face to go ahead and downgrade your phone. So do this at your own risk in case you end up breaking your phone or end up in a boot loop. I will not be held responsible. So do this at your own risk. But yeah, let me show you how I downgraded my phone from Android Pie to Android Oreo. And I think I might even downgrade this thing back to Android Nougat. Because NuGet had the best battery backup and the best performance on the XZ Premium. Alright guys, so on your computer you'll need to do a few things. First thing you should do is download and install Flash Tool. This link is in the video description. Just go to this link and it will take you to the download page. And once you have downloaded and installed Flash Tool, you'll need to install the drivers. Now you'll need to go to the place wherever you have installed Flash Tool. By default, it goes into the C drive and then Flash Tool and click on this folder and then install flash tool drivers I already have it installed now if you don't want to install these drivers or if you have PC companion sorry Xperia companion installed so in case you already have Xperia companion installed you don't need to install these drivers because Xperia companion already comes with these drivers and I already have Xperia companion installed so that's why we don't need this driver package now the next thing you'll need to do is download the FTF file or the firmware of your phone. Now I could not find the proper firmware on Xperia blog. This is the usual place that I download the firmwares from but they don't seem to have one for uh, XZ Premium Dual. So that's why I downloaded this one. This one seems to be the closest I could find. Really, I'm a newbie in this and most of these websites are paid hosts or they have some kind of limit. That's why I just had to find one with a Google Drive link. So again, I'll put this link in the video description and do thank this guy. This guy is awesome. Thanks man for uploading these or whoever did this. Um, I'm gonna make an account just to thank you. But anywho, uh, select the correct model i have the g8142 this one the g8141 is the single sim variant of xz premium and g8142 is the dual sim variant click on this google drive link and download the file so over here right click and download i think i already have this downloaded so once you have finished downloading the file it will be in your downloads folder or wherever you have saved it so just cut this file or copy it, do whatever you want and then go to this PC, local disk C, users and then click your username wherever you've logged in. I've logged in into administrator so administrator and locate this folder called .flash tool. Enter this and then enter firmwares and then paste it. And that's really all you need to do. Now we can launch flash tool. Now once flash tool is up, click on this flash icon, then select flash mode and then click OK. And you'll already, and then you'll see the firmware's option over here. If you correctly placed the file, this one should appear automatically. There you have it. Now here inside this box, you really need not check anything, but I kind of prefer doing a complete factory data reset. That's why I did 
check user data and once you check user data all your apps all your stuff in the internal memory will be erased do keep that in mind you will lose all your data and you will need to remember your google account details because once the phone is wiped out the phone as a security measure the phone will ask for your google account details so please 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 uh, don't do this if you don't know your google account details you will be locked out of your phone and i will also check this apps log uh, i did some research on forums and most people recommend that you do clear the user data to avoid any conflict any problems but anywho that's about it and then click on flash and then just wait for this uh, flash tool to prepare the files now i have a fairly decent system otherwise on slower computer the computers this might take up to 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes so now we'll move on to the phone okay so once the files are ready to be flashed it will give you this dialog it just says that you should turn the power off and hold the volume down button while you connect the usb to your phone so you can already see i have the phone powered down so I take the USB and press and hold the volume down button and connect the phone to the computer. And it should automatically detect and start the flash process. And it will show you a little dialog here. So let me just zoom in and show it to you what it's saying. Okay, it gives you, it gives you this question. Those data are not in the FSC script, it will be skipped. Just, uh, just select the yes button and that's it now the uh, this program is flashing the phone with Android 8 Oreo and now you have to wait for about five six minutes just takes around three to four minutes on my computer may take longer on a slower system so let's just wait and see what happens All right, guys, that's it. That, that barely took around two to three minutes. So once you get this message, uh, sending power down, power down status OK, and the phone has now disconnected. Now all you have to do is unplug and boot your phone. Yikes. And do keep in mind that this first boot should take around five minutes, so we just keep the phone here and we wait okay you can see we are now on the setup screen now let's change the language because it allows you to change the language right away so let's select English English India because I'm in India then get started no I don't want diagnostic information to be sent you know guys I'm just gonna set this up and I'll be right back now do you see why I told you that you should remember your Google account details which was signed in into this phone prior to the flashing process because to continue you will need to sign in with a Google account which was signed in on this phone previously. So I already know my details so I'm gonna sign in and I'll be right back. Alright guys so here we go we are now back to Android Oreo the good old drop down notification bar let's go to settings let's go to uh, system and about phone and you can see we are now back to Android 8 now the security patch level is 1st December 2017 but if you want I think you can up update that so if we tap on software update it will show you an update so let's go to system update oops it's already downloading but yeah you can see system updates are available Okay, so quick little update before I end this video. I kind of ended up flashing a different firmware on my phone. So you can see the security patch level is September 1st, 2018 as opposed to January on the January 2018 on the French firmware. Now this firmware that I flashed is for the Taiwanese market. This one, customized TW and it's for the Taiwanese market. And it's very simple. You just click on this button and then you download and then you flash it. And it looks like this is the latest firmware for the Taiwanese market. They haven't got a taste of Android Pie just yet. So let's go to battery. You can see how smooth everything is. No more lags. But yeah, I got one hour of screen on time. I unplugged my phone about 4 hours 43 minutes ago. And still got 90, 91% of charge left. 
so i think i'm pretty happy with this update and uh, we'll continue using oreo oh and here's another comment that i would like to address uh, mark says that netflix does not load under wi-fi that is correct under android pi it will not buffer video on wi-fi now once i have downgraded to android oreo it works perfectly fine i have netflix here and i've tested it it works fine Oh, and I also downgraded my Xperia XA Ultra to Android Marshmallow. So this is my Xperia XA Ultra and this phone has literally got a new lease of life because on Android 7, this phone was almost unusable and once you downgrade this to Android Marshmallow, everything just seems to work fine, including the battery backup and just the overall performance of the device is much better on Android Marshmallow. Seems like with successive Android upgrades, these phones tend to become slower. Uh, I mean, Android does become heavier and they just perform worse. And there's really no um, inclusion of no new exciting features from Sony. So it's better to stay on the original OS if you do prefer performance over new features and stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty much happy with the XA Ultra. This phone has become usable once again. Now one thing I'm slightly bummed about is that I don't get to use the new camera UI but that's totally fine this camera UI is completely functional there are absolutely no issues here and it's kind of fast I mean predicted capture is working video superior auto manual and this particular build of Android Oreo also has the distortion fix so if you go down here you'll see correction for image distortion is there I thought of downgrading all the way back to Android Nougat but Android Nougat won't have that distortion fix so I'm completely fine with this one. Oh and guess what guys I enabled the default night light on my XZ Premium and yes it does work. So if you were upgrading to Android or Android Pi this feature would get permanently disabled so now since I'm running Android Oreo I have night light. Alright guys, I think that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below and I will be more than happy to answer you guys. So thank you for watching. Do stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.